I'm David Patrick, and you are listening to Gospel Tangents. Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. In our final conversation with polygamy expert Ann Wilde, we'll talk about the reception Jesus Was Married received in 1969 when the book was first released. It had a surprisingly popular response among the BYU crowd. We'll also find out David Patrick's response as to why this book is so influential. David is an apostle for Christ's church, the Righteous Brands. Check out our conversation. <laughs> well, if anybody has more questions, they can get one of these That's books. That's right. Yes. And read it, because all of these things we've been discussing, pretty much uh, except for the papyrus that he found more recently, are mentioned in there. And I might add, too, after we took this one copy up to Joseph Fielding Smith and got his endorsement. Oh, yes. We took a few copies down to 70's bookstore in Provo. Um, and uh, we took in about 10 copies. And E.L. Whitehead was a manager at the time. 70's bookstore was kind of a small desert book in a way. I mean, uh, it carried mostly LDS books. And um, in fact, I think it was called 70's Missionary Bookstore or something like that. But. Um, so we took that, these copies in uh, to Mr. Whitehead and uh, showed it to him and wanted to know if he would carry some in his store. And he said, oh, gee, I don't know. Uh, this is 69, 1969. 50 years ago. Yeah. And so he said, gee, if you'd have said, was Jesus married? Maybe I could, but, you know, Jesus was married. That's pretty, uh, that's kind of controversial. And Ogden said, well, you know, I'd be glad to... Even for Mormons, that would be controversial. Well, kind of. <laughs> oh, yeah, it still is. Um, so anyway, he said, well, why don't you leave a few copies here, and I'll leave them in the back, and if anybody asks for them, then I'll, I'll get one out. Well, ironically, at the same time, up at BYU, the religion professors were being asked, was Jesus married in their classes? And I'm not going to mention names of the professors, but there were two of them that said, well, you know, we're not supposed to talk about this. We've been advised. So anyway, uh, to lay a little groundwork, uh, the next day or two after we took them down to the 70s bookstore, Brother Whitehead calls Ogden and he says, I sold all 10 of those copies. Can you bring me 20 more? <laughs> so we did. And we couldn't figure out why. And I don't know if Brother Whitehead knew until later what was happening is that these religious professors found out about Ogden's book down there, and Ogden was friends with them. And so uh, they knew the book was coming out. So what they did was they'd tell the students, well, we're not supposed to, as religion professors at BYU, we're not supposed to say one way or the other. But there's a book down at 70's Bookstore. If you want to go down and get that, that has the whole story in it. <laughs> so uh, he sold 20 and another few, and then 50 more. And then we just kept taking them down there because the BYU kids, students, were coming down and buying them. So I just thought it was kind of ironic because about the same time, you know. That, um, and we have sold thousands of copies of that. It's been an eighth printing. It's Ogden's bestseller. Um, it's uh, one of 65, but it's his most popular one. Well, and I know I, after my interview with you last time, I, I, I bought one on Amazon, and it looks just like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my copy they're is... really inexpensive, too. It was just... Oh, yeah. All my copy is a, dollars, a second yeah, edition. It's, it's just $6, really. So you've that's got a second, second edition? That's a second edition. And, then you've got and the this first is the first edition, edition yeah. 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 So, in fact, that was well, the we first did, one, too, um, right? The first six books that we did were hardback. Uh, and then they kept raising the price at the bindery, and we just couldn't afford it. And we wanted to keep the books as uh, inexpensive as possible. Mm -hmm. So we went to paperback after that. Okay. So the first few editions or printings were hardback and then paperback after that. Okay. Well, cool. Well, any last thoughts you guys want to share on, on this topic? Other than the fact that we both are converted, that he's just married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want to, uh, to picture him any other way. That's just my personal belief. But I think there's enough evidence to prove it. Okay. Yeah, there's... I, I, it, if you start asking the question, was Jesus married, then I think... It, plausibly you then have to ask well what are these other women that show up in the Bible 
that seem to be associated with him, like Martha and, and Mary. That There's that one story where Martha says, hey, she's not helping me with the housework. And it sounds like a family affair. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like a family affair there. Well, and then it gives you a little bit better understanding of the, the Lazarus story, because Bethany was their home, and that's where Christ went many times. Uh, and why? Well, it wasn't just to visit some followers or disciples. That was his home, because if Mary and Martha were his wives, Lazarus was his brother-in-law. So um, he had a personal interest there. So, so I get it. it. I see if you if you ask the question, was he married, then you have to ask, was he also plurally married, right? And, and that's uncomfortable for people. And, but that's okay. History's history. Truth is truth. That's okay. I mean, okay. you could take one step and at least admit that he was married to Mary Magdalene, which a lot of Christian scholars have come to that conclusion. That's mm -hmm. not a big leap. Uh, the leap is I know when people don't like polygamy, it's hard for them to believe in the fact that he had more than one. Well, and it's awfully clear for all those people who don't like polygamy, the Old Testament is full of polygamy. Like, you can't. Oh, yeah, you can't the deny that. You can't get, There's get through a story 30. It mentions 30 men that had more than one wife <laughs> in the Old Testament. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of evidence for that. Yeah. Well, in, 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 our, in our faith, um, Anne isn't part of our, our church, but we're definitely good friends. But in our faith, we don't have everybody in there that's, that's fundamentalist that is, has plural families. Uh, I'm a monogamous myself. And so not everybody that comes to our church is going to be a polygamist either. And so, but it's, but it's an interesting story to ask about, was Jesus married? Because it raises these great questions. Mm -hmm. And again, I'll just finish with, I think it's a far more compelling story that Jesus Christ was married and that he left behind wives and children. And there is a bloodline. There's... There's something sacred about that genealogy, and it's pretty awesome. Well, great. Well, David Patrick and Ann Wild, I really appreciate you spending so much time here on Gospel Tangents. Thank Thanks, you. Rick. Mm -hmm. Always like an opportunity to talk about the gospel. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Ann Wild and David Patrick. David will be back on here in a couple of months. We'll be talking about the Adam-God doctrine, so I know that's been a big request some people have really been interested in. So we'll have David back on uh, in a future episode. And I'd like to thank them both for spending so much time talking with us about the, the book Jesus Was Married. So thanks again, Ann and David. I really appreciate it. In our next conversation, we're going to jump to modern history and we're going to talk about the priesthood ban in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. You know, it's interesting when you're doing modern history, you can actually talk to the people that are making history. Uh, I wrote President Carter a note and I asked him, this is what's been said about you, that you used the IRS to crack down on the Mormons, to put pressure on them to lift the priesthood ban. And he wrote back a wonderfully written letter. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please support Gospel Tangents and become a subscriber. For just $5 a month, go to uh, patreon.com slash gospel tangents and you can hear the entire interview. And you can also get uh, transcripts available at either our Amazon website or if you want to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website at gospeltangents.com and you can click the yellow subscribe button. Of course, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other places. Uh, make sure you subscribe on iTunes at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. And don't forget to click here to subscribe on YouTube here for a transcript. And over here, we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again for listening.